talking. Good afternoon yeah, from Vienna. Uh, welcome to our seminar. So we are in the fourth season season of the OVO seminar, and uh, yeah, we the season is this season is dedicated yeah, to our uh, young colleagues yeah? uh, working in optimization or in in area athletic optimizations. So we want to offer them a platform yeah, to present uh, their research, and it is my uh, great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, our speaker today, who is Jing Wei Liang yeah, from. Uh, uh, Shanghai, yeah, this is uh, the Zhao Tong University of Shanghai. Ying Wei uh, received his PhD from the University of Caen in France in 2016. And if I'm not wrong, under supervision of Jalal Fadili. And he was, uh, yes. uh, okay, thank you. And he was, uh, after his PhD, he was a postdoc researcher at the University of Cambridge and uh, the Queen Mary University in UK and moved yeah, this summer yeah, back to Shanghai, to his home university. So same place where, where he did his master studies. And he's uh, on a tenure track position. Uh, Jing Wei is uh, working in uh, optimization, but also in operator theory. It's very much interested in applications in, in imaging and data science. Yeah, and today he will talk on uh, some first order methods and some acceleration techniques. Yeah probably with, by using some uh, geometric aspects. So anyway, thank you for accepting our invitation. You have 45 yeah. minutes for a talk. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Radu, and uh, many thanks for this uh, nice introduction. And it, yeah, it is my great pleasure to be here to, introduce, uh, to present our work. So this uh, is a joint work with Claire Spoon, uh, a former colleague and who is now in bus. So yeah, today I'm gonna talk about the, uh, some results on the acceleration of first daughter methods. Uh, so uh, basically, this is going to be the outline of the today's talk. As I'm, I'm going to spend half of the talk uh, talk about introductions and uh, trajectory of first order methods, and then uh, second half going to be the other methods and uh, some related uh, related work and numerics. Okay, so yeah, let's start with uh, directly the uh, optimization problem. So uh, from many uh, real worlds, for example, image processing in what's problem and the data science, etc. So uh, many times. Um, very often we're going to end up solving an um, observation problem of this kind of form. So we're going to, we are, we're going to minimize some or two functions, f plus the sum of uh, this uh, r, uh, r component. So here f is going to be a smooth branch or with the Lipschitz continued grid. And uh, this mostly due to, uh, refer to the data fidelity term. And then the r i is going to be the uh, proper loss and make use, convex or non-convex, and uh, which is for, for uh, promoting try information onto the object we are trying to find. For example, two derivation, wavelet, and the dictionary. So here, K here going to be uh, bounded in your for example, or the discrete gradient or the wavelet transform operator. So yeah, we have this many uh, many applications. And the, the challenge of solving the problem is that the uh, objective is not smooth due to the regularization RIs. And it can be non convex and it's composite due to the linear operator KI. And uh, yeah, the dimension of the problem is very high. But the hope is that the problem here is very structured. For example, we have the smooth terms and then we have the sum of the non-smooth terms. And also we can also decouple the uh, the composition of with the linear versus using the duality. So then if over the past decades, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, here I'm gonna have two examples. The first one is gonna be imaging problem. Uh, so that's, that's this is the, uh, in the very left one is the image taken by the Hubble telescope, which uh, is out of focus. So we have blur. The goal here is to deep blur. Basically we want to, uh, we want the image to be this kind of sharp. So the full model of the problem is very simple. That basically we have the uh, our image and then which is an unknowing kernel. So we can have the convolution between the two. Then we have some extra noise for example. Uh, added to what, uh, what Gaussian noise. So to decouple the two, in the y and x uh, respectively, and then we can have this regularization term on x, for example, total duration or wavelet. We also have extra constraint for our variables, for example, uh, box constraint, and then for uh, y because it's blank, uh, it's a convergent kernel, so we have the sum of rates equal to one constraint. So the second one we're gonna from a chemistry variant, for example, if we want to have a sparse representation of a face using dictionary. By the sparse, I mean that the dictionary here is sparse. So it, uh, imagine that you can have many faces, uh, face images, then you're gonna have uh, this kind of uh, 
end up with a matrix uh, decomposition model. So basically we that the A, the collection of all the images is equal to the, uh, the X is, is the, uh, the dictionary here and then Y gonna be the representation uh, with, uh, X, uh, with error. So the model to recover the, uh, to, uh, to uh, restore the, uh, the dictionary and its corresponding coefficient is gonna be yeah, also similar this form. So which is a smooth differential term here also by linear in terms of X and Y. So we're gonna have extra constraint onto the X and the Y respectively. So this, these are the very standard examples from the, for example, magic, uh, from image processing or computer vision. Okay, so the, uh, the uh, although over the decades, uh, over the past uh, two or three decades, yeah, a rich class of first thoughts uh, methods are developed. So we're gonna see uh, some examples of them later on. But uh, I would say the very fundamental of the uh, of these uh, methods are the uh, somehow the same. For example, uh, basically here are gonna two ingredients. The first one is that when you minimize a smooth uh, uh, component, a smooth function, then with the Lipschitz continuous gradient, then the uh, uh, we're gonna apply the uh, uh, gradient distance step, which is the implicit OLA scheme. Basically, that current step we're going to commit the gradient, a gradient, and then we're going to move uh, along the uh, next gradient uh, direction on, uh, with the certain step size, which is gamma k. So this for the smooth case, and then for the non smooth case, for example, we are minimize uh, R, which is the proper convex and also mean continuous. And then to deal with, then we're going to first define this uh, so called approximate operator, which is uh, widely used now in non smooth alternation, which is of this form. Just that the uh, the function scale by r uh, gamma sorry plus this square term. So when r is convex, then uh, proper convex loss emission, then the, this object is strongly convex. So we have a unique minimizer which is denoted as prox r at v. So then actually in your analysis, this corresponds to the implicit OLA scheme. So the iteration kind of reads like this. We have this gamma k here, which greater than zero, uh, while for the greater descent, we have gamma k between zero and two over l. Okay, so with these two basic elements that we can build a, yeah, a rich class of first method. For example, when we have the minimization of the sum of a smooth and smooth, then we can have a full back splitting. And then when we minimize the sum of two functions, then we can have a Douglas Rashford and ADMM. And then we can have parameter splitting when the announcements part is composed with a linear operator. And then if you have uh, more than two sum of uh, uh, more than two terms of an uh, uh, term, then you can have other methods basically. So the, the history of the uh, first uh, method that's back to the uh, 1950s from the micro PDs, but yeah, I would say over the past uh, three decades, then it has become a, a central part of uh, the inverse problem, um, imaging, etc. So the, and uh, also many of them can be written as a fixed point iteration, which can be written in, in the form that we can have a Hilbert space, which is not necessarily the space you're minimizing your, your objective. Then the corresponding fixed operator F with a non-empty fixed point set of fixed points, then we can have the fixed point iteration, which is ZK plus one equal to F ZK. Okay, so uh, we are interested in the accelerations. So in the literature, there are basically two popular approaches to us uh, for acceleration. The first one is inertial technique. So which that back to Polyan's work. Uh, so the the uh, the idea is very simple. So you're given the uh, past two points, you can extrapolate along the direction of uh, xk minus one pointing to xk to have um, point x bar k, and then you can update your x uh, the next new point based on this x bar k. Uh, sorry, the, uh, geographically that we can have uh, this, uh, this uh, the black dot, uh, blue dot here is the gradient distance, for example, from xk minus one to xk plus two, we can have a three gradient distance step. Why if we use this uh, in inertial technique, then we can avoid computing the gradient at xk minus uh, at sk. So we're gonna reduce the computation of uh, gradient by one times by one, but we're gonna reach a similar accuracy point, which is the red xk plus one. So this is the initial technique. And then the second one actually is uh, the success over relaxation. So all the uh, relaxed, relaxed uh, fixed point iteration. So here, when you have lambda k greater than one, then we, we can define new parameter, which is ak equal to lambda k minus one. And then we can write a similar form uh, corresponding to the initial scheme uh, we just saw, just that here we have x bar k minus one instead of xk. So this is the difference between uh, over relaxation and the initial Okay, so here I'm gonna yeah, dive into a little bit more details about the initial accelerations. So from the the heavy bomb method, and here uh, I list uh, six milestones from uh, natural acceleration phase down, and then uh, also uh, several uh, results on the dynamic systems. Okay, let's uh, look at the heavy bomb. 
So as we have already seen that the high variable is uh, uh, the iteration is like this. So basically that we're gonna have this extra at a point x bar k. And then in the gradient step, we only replace this x k with x bar k and then in the gradient, nothing is done. So uh, when the objective function is uh, uh, twice differentiable and the locally strongly convex, then actually the optimal rate can be obtained by this level method is of this form. So which is the optimal rate we can achieve. And also, yeah, you can write down the uh, dynamic system we have ball, which is uh, of this form. Yeah, it's a second order system. And here, gamma, uh, gamma is something constant. And then this, uh, so uh, although you can prove, for example, the uh, convergence of the sequence and also uh, of the method, also the local optimal rate, but the global, there is no theoretical guarantee, for example, for the rate of convergence. So, yeah, so uh, for this, uh, sorry, here, yeah, actually, sorry, the table here. So then let's uh, uh, put uh, yeah, move one step forward, for example, then he should replace the x bar k, uh, the x k here in the gradient with x bar k, and also a particular choice of, of the initial parameters. Then in terms of the objective function value, then the red is the one over, and can be improved from one over k to uh, one over k square. And then when the function is more over strongly convex, then you can have improved uh, linear rate. And then, so they also, uh, uh, of work on, for example, on the initial proximal point algorithm, for example, in around 2000, uh, Artush and his collaborators work on the uh, dynamic system of the uh, maximum monotone operators. So the difference between uh, the difficulty of analyzing this dynamic system is that there's no cocoa six involved. So then uh, to have the guaranteed, uh, for example, to uh, have the solution of, of the iterates is gonna be more difficult than the, for example, the dynamic system of, uh, of the uh, uh, gradient flow. So for example, you can, we can only have uh, AK less than one third, then we can have the convergence, weak convergence of the sequence. And then yeah, in 2009, yeah, the, uh, yeah, one of the most popular first law methods here is the uh, FISTA. So which is the extension, uh, um, which extends the uh, natural result to the non smooth case. So here we have this R, the prox calculation onto the non smooth terms. So, uh, the rate here, we're gonna have two rates. For example, in the uh, original FISTA, we have the rate from one over K to one over K square with a big O. Uh, let's on, for example, in this work by Shambo and Dosa, they improve the sequence, uh, the convergence of the sequence. And also in the, uh, in the, uh, in the result of uh, from uh, Hedy, that the, for example, they show that the, uh, actually the rate is uh, instead of a big O one over K square, uh, to a small o one over k square. And also you can have the rate of sequence from small o one over square root k to one over k. And then, yeah, so then from 2014, that then the, uh, yeah, the work from uh, uh, this one, they studied the dynamic system of the nest oscillation. And uh, then, uh, yeah, recently, for example, the heavy, they studied the dynamic system of the maximum monitoring again. Uh, but so to enforce the cohesivity, they consider using the regularization of the maximum monitoring operators. And then with this one, so with the lambda, uh, lambda t here goes to the uh, goes to infinity at the t square rate, then and the gamma t of this form, then actually they show that the sequence of convergence of uh, the rate of sequence convergence is uh, small one over k. But actually we're gonna say later on that uh, although this threat looks great, but in practice, this may not be the case. Okay, so uh, basically that's the initial acceleration have uh, enjoyed a huge scale and success on the accelerating descent method, for example, gradient descent on the proximal gradient descent. So you can improve the rate from one over K to one over K square for the operative and then for the sequence one over square root K to one over K. So this is really a great. So over the past uh, one or two decades, people have been extending the initial acceleration to other methods, for example, the, the uh, Dr. Dashford, quantum splitting, and the many others. But uh, are we really uh, blessed with acceleration, for example, for the combination of initial with this methods? Uh, so the answer actually is uh, quite, uh, uh, is negative um, in some aspects. For example, we're gonna look at this example here. Yeah, minimizing, uh, we're minimizing the sum of two functions, uh, not so the uh, FDR here gonna be the creator of the uh, Douglas Rushford space method. So the fixed iteration is gonna just like this. And we have that the sequence is about O1 over K, but there's no object function, uh, objective uh, uh, convergence rate uh, available. So then we can also have the initial uh, solution here. So this is uh, uh, the Colorado. 
so here basically you can have this uh, iteration and uh, there's no res available in general. And also what have, uh, what, what's more important is it may fail to provide a solution. Also here, I can also show you an example, which is the uh, an initial Douglas Rashford motivated by the Hedy's result, which is a regularized initial Douglas Rashford splitting. So here we can have the some parameters here uh, according to this result. So with proper setting, we can also show that the sequence, the convergence rate of this sequence here is a small O1 or K, but as we can see the example from the next slide, so this is not actually not good. Okay, the example actually we are considering is very simple. It's a feasibility problem in R2 that we are trying to find a common point of two uh, intersecting lines. So then this can be the fixed one operator, so which replace the uh, proximal point with a projection onto T2 respectively. Okay, so here is what we have for the Dr. Zephyr splitting. So the black line is going to be the convergence rate of BK minus ZK minus one. So this, uh, this, uh, uh, the problem here is to the linear. So the uh, the mass of the globally uh, convert at the linear rate uh, going through result from um, Bausch. Okay, so this is the uh, DR method. And then, okay, this is inertial DR. So as we can see that uh, here I choose the inertial parameter as a constant in the point to three. So the blue line is the convergence behavior of ZK minus ZK minus one of the methods. So as we can see that it is slower than the, uh, than the non-inertial schemes. And also what uh, actually you can prove here is that as long as A is greater than zero, then you can always have a slow rate compared to the non-inertial scheme. So here, inertial gonna slow you down. Also looking at the, the regularized inertial that uh, okay, so here is the, the the blue line here is the convergence rate of the, uh, of the methods. So actually here we have something better that here is, uh, uh, this is actually one over K rate, but uh, this is a sublinear rate. While for the non, uh, the standard DR that we have a linear rate here. So actually in the beginning somewhere it can be faster, but eventually you can have, a, it is a slower. So for this case, actually apply the inertial here also slow us down, so this is a problem. Okay, to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to conclude this, I'm gonna mention a, a, a recent work from the a group of uh, Rene Meda is that they studied the dynamic system of uh, ADMM. So for example, consider the minimization problem here that uh, minimizing Rx plus JZ and uh, with this linear constraint, which is the standard uh, for a formulation of uh, the ADMM uh, uh, methods. So here, if you define the V here, uh, the uh, Vx here as this, uh, Function object function value here. Then actually, you can write down the dynamic system of the ADMM, uh, uh, the non-standard one, a non-accelerated, non that's the one going to be the first order dynamic system, and then with the uh, second order dynamic system, and uh, you, you can write down this. Yeah, that's the difference from the uh, what we have uh, uh, we seen earlier that we have a t transpose a here in front of the uh, uh, the uh, the. Uh, trajectory here. So uh, in their first work, they, they impose a smoothness onto the RNNJ and then later on they, uh, they remove this assumption by considering the, uh, again, they use it a regularization of the, uh, of the problem. And then, yeah, in the, that, uh, in the continuous case, they show that uh, the, object, uh, the competent rate of the objective can be improved from one over T to one over T squared. However, that the, this system is not that easy to discretize. For example, you can have a discrete, uh, uh, it's reasons, uh, it's reasons, which shows you one over k square rate, but uh, you cannot prove it because, uh, because mainly because this uh, this term here, because uh, make it a symplec uh, symplectic uh, system other than the uh, uh, dissipative uh, dynamic system. Okay, so we're going to summarize a little bit that the uh, nest row of phase actually pro provides our, uh, pro uh, provide us the optimal convergence rate. For example, from one over t to one over t square. So then, generalization of the initial technique to first order methods or to fixed point iteration actually is uh, possible. Yeah, actually, there's ha there has been a lot of work on this. So yeah, with the proper choice of parameters, you can have a convergence of the sequence, but you cannot have a uh, um, acceleration guarantee unless you have strong assumption. For example, for the ADMM, if you uh, assume for the strong complexity or smoothness, then you can have uh, uh, you can have uh, stronger claims. And also, yeah, the problem is that for given a method, for example, DR here, then the outcome of the initial DR or the uh, of of or the over relaxed DR, so it's a problem and the parameter dependent. For example, for the linear case, we just saw that then the non relaxed DR gave us the best rate. So if you relax, then you can have a, a worse rate. 
So here, that uh, the opacity that uh, a generic acceleration from is missing uh, by this, I mean that we can, uh, we don't have a scheme which can provide a, a, a can provide acceleration for the decent method, and at the same time can provide acceleration for the uh, non decent method. For example, the DR or IDM here. So here, uh, this is the goal of this work. Okay, so before we presenting the uh, the uh, our acceleration scheme, so let's. Uh, Think about a little bit more about why the initial actually fails to provide acceleration for, for example, DR here. So this is going to be the trajectory of the sequence here. So again, let's look at the two examples. So we have two figures here. That then the for the left hand side one is the uh, the trajectory of sequence of the gradient descent and the natural acceleration. So the black dot is corresponding to the gradient descent. So which is a very smooth curve. So if we look at locally, for example, every local segment you can treat it as a straight line. And then, then the trajectory of the XK for the natural oscillation is this uh, uh, red curve. So it, look, it looks very, uh, is uh, not that periodic, uh, uh, for example, but actually is the, this is the projection of, uh, of an elliptic spiral from the R4 to R2. So actually, if we zoom in, there's, there's still some uh, periodical pattern here. So this is what happens for the uh, for the gradient that you can have a local straight line trajectory, and then you can have this kind of oscillating uh, curve. And then if you look at actually the, for the double reference screen for the very simple feasibility problem in R2, actually, we can see that the black dot here is the trajectory of the fixed point sequence, which is Without nothing is already a curve. Actually, here is a logarithmic a logarithmic spiral. So it's perfect log, a logarithmic spiral. And then when we apply the extrapolation onto this curve, actually each time when we have this extrapolation, actually we are extrapolating along the tangent direction, which is gonna move away from the uh, from the limiting point, which is the center of this uh, of this uh, curve. So this is why, for example, if we apply inertial here. We can just uh, slow our uh, slowing us down, and then the length of the curve here going to be uh, longer, or the trajectory here going to be longer than the non accelerated one. So actually, this is the difference between gradient descent and the DR. That's for gradient descent from the beginning, uh, without acceleration, it's a straight line. While for DR, without anything, it's already a curve. So this somehow is uh, the key here, the difference between the two methods. But of course, for some methods, that actually the DR gonna give uh, gonna shows uh, gonna show the straight line trajectory. But for this example, it's a spiral. Okay, so basically, that uh, at, at the beginning when we talk about the non-segmentation, we said okay, so the problem is structured. So then, using the structure, people have developed a class of first order methods for best splitting, double joint splitting, and the parameter splitting, etc. So then, uh, this method. Uh, only yeah, is motivated by the structure of the problem. So can we have something more to distinguish or classify the first order methods here? So for example, here based on the lecture of the sense. So this is our uh, uh, result here that actually we can use the trajectory of the sequence to further classify the uh, the methods in different categories. But the problem here is that the first order, uh, first order method in general are nonlinear, except the gradient descent on the least square term, for example. So then, while the uh, sorry, uh, the analysis of the trajectory, uh, we we can it can be done in the linear case, for example, linear dynamics. So how should we do? So we're going to use the work of a partial submission, which uh, which is the tool I have been using since my PhD to analyze the uh, local behavior of first order methods. So. Uh, uh, this uh, this uh, tool is developed by uh, Luis. So he also gave a talk uh, in the early seasons on the partial smoothness. Okay, so here we're gonna uh, that uh, we're gonna hear the definition of partial smoothness that we're gonna say a function r is partially smooth at a point relative to a set mx containing the point. If first that the substantial function at the point is not empty, and then we have the extra three uh, conditions. The first one is that the set m, uh, m here, uh, m, uh, curly m x here is the C to smooth manifold. And then the function respect, respect to the set here is also seen to smooth. The second one is called tangent sharpness. So here, uh, here we have the subdimension of the function at a point, let's say this is the uh, segment here. So here I'm gonna uh, only focus on the case that uh, R is pro proper convex and also semi-continuous. So it's a subdimension is a close, compact, close compact, a compact set here. So then it's uh, the, um, 
the span of this uh, subdifferential can be this uh, dash line, and then we're gonna move to the origin so then we can have the subspace uh, parallel to the span of the subdifferential. And then we can turn the second and we're gonna take the orthogonal of this subspace and we're gonna denote as Tx here. So then the sharpness actually tells us then the, uh, the tangent space of the manifold at the point is equal to this Tx. So this is actually the key point that you can you build a connection between the uh, the function and the manifold through the tangent space of the manifold and subdimensional of the function at the point. So this is the uh, the key thing about uh, partial smoothing, which is the sharpness here. And then last one is continuity. So the subdimensional is a set value mapping. So here along the manifold uh, near uh, near x, that is going to be a single value operator here. So here is. Uh, yeah, for example, the examples of participants' functions are the popular, uh, the widely used regularization, L1, L2, I1, L2, for sparsity promoting, and the nuclear norm for the low rank, and the total version for a gradient sparsity. Sorry, and also if a set is smooth, then yeah, the function, indicator function of the set is also smooth. So here is an example of a lasso in R2. For example, we can see here uh, along, the, this is the set M here. So along this set M, we can see the contour here, which is, uh, which looks like uh, a quadratic function. So which is most differentiable, but I'll talk now to this uh, M, which is uh, uh, the X2 direct uh, uh, axis. So the function, uh, yeah, looks like this shape. So which is similar to the absolute value function value, uh, absolute value uh, function. So apparently the function is smooth along this direction. And then what's more important is that actually the, Minimizer of the problem it lives in the uh, lives in this uh, Pythagorean manifold. So this is also another key thing yeah, that the uh, uh, the solution lives in this Pythagorean manifold. Okay, so with this tool, what we can do? So basically, we have this uh, yeah this uh, uh, pipeline. So from the first other method that we can have the convergence of sequence, and then we're going to define a, de a design a non degenerate condition, which is based on the absolute condition. And then we're going to show a so-called finite uh, identification property is that the sequence generated by your methods going to find this part of the smooth manifold in a finite, a finite number of iteration. And then, then actually from that point, the iterate actually is acting on the manifold. So meaning that then along the manifold, you can linearize your uh, iteration, which is going to give you a linear system and uh, of uh, with the matrix M. And then what we're gonna do is analyze the spectral properties of this, this matrix M. For example, if the spectral radius of this M is strictly less than one, then we're gonna have a local linear convergence. Uh, and then if we have a more uh, precise property about the angle values, for example, it's real or complex, then we can have the trajectory properties of the sequence. Okay, so even this, we uh, we work out the uh, results for the uh, fallback splitting uh, Douglas splitting and DMM and the Trump splitting. Okay, so first for the uh, fallback with uh, fallback splitting. So which uh, you can show that the M is similar to a symmetric matrix. So then the eigenvalue of the uh, of the of the matrix can be uh, minus one to one. So if the uh, if the leading eigenvalue in absolute value is uh, positive, then we can have a straight line trajectory. So if the leading eigenvalue is negative, and then we're gonna have the uh, oscillating. So we can have this kind of oscillating, but eventually we still have a straight line. So this is for the case of fallback splitting. Then for DI is that if the, uh, which for the minimizing of the two non-smooth functions. So if we both functions are polyhedral, then actually the corresponding uh, matrix is normal. Uh, the result can be also found from the uh, a series work from, for example, Hans Bosch. And then the matrix is uh, gonna be normal and then gonna be with Complex eigenvalue of this form, which is cosine theta e uh, uh, to this uh, uh, natural number. And then uh, this is going to give us a um, perfect uh, logarithmic spiral of this form, for example. And then if the function are not polyhedral, then we can still have linearized matrix, but then the spectral analysis of the metric is going to be very difficult to do. Then we cannot have uh, uh, analytic properties of the uh, corresponding spiral, uh, trajectory of sequence. And then for the parameter splitting uh, method, then similar to the DR, that if the both functions are polyhedral, then M is a block diagonalizable. And then actually we can show that the leading uh, the leading two by two matrix is gonna uh, leads us to uh, this uh, elliptic, uh, elliptical spiral of this form here. So basically we can have uh, yeah two types of uh, trajectories, straight line or spirals, and then we can have two types uh, two types of spirals. 
Okay, so then for the uh, ADMM, for example, if we have a uh, uh, smoothness or local strong connects, then we can have a straight line trajectory. Uh, the proper choice of the uh, of the uh, augmented Lagrangian coefficients. Okay, so this is the uh, trajectory of first moment. So basically, that we uh, uh, from the uh, uh, failure of initial schemes, we motivated us to study the trajectory of sequence. And next, we're going to use this trajectory of sequence to uh, develop a uh, so called adaptive acceleration scheme. Okay, this is going to be, uh, yeah, this comes to the third part of, the, of today's talk. This adaptive acceleration, basically, which is uh, naively, is uh, following the trajectory of the sequence. Okay, the idea actually is very simple is that given uh, past points, uh, Vk uh, minus Q minus one to Zk, so can we predict the next point? which is zk plus one. Okay, to do so, which uh, actually this uh, can be a very simple job. Uh, first, we're gonna define the difference vectors, which is uh, vk equal to zk minus zk minus one. So we're gonna have them uh, connecting them together. So the first one is that, uh, so we're gonna, uh, we're, gonna back, um, we're gonna backwards one step is that, can we use uh, vk minus one to vk minus q to fit the current direction, which is the vk pointing from zk minus one to zk. So the following is very simple here. Actually, it's nothing but a least square that we're gonna consider the uh, uh, linear representation of vk by vk minus one to vk minus q. So this is at least a square term. And then the zk gonna be our coefficients. So now suppose that we are given zk plus one, so then we can do the similar thing to have, the, uh, to have zk plus one, but we are not given uh, zk plus one. So if locally the trajectory is regular, and then we can say that CK plus one is approximately equal to CK. So we can have this approximation. So we can have VK plus one is equal to this linear representation. Here we assume that the linear representation is, uh, precise, is uh, uh, precise. And then we're gonna have is approximately equal to the replacing the CK plus one by CK here. So this is the approximation here. Uh, so doing so that we can have an estimation of the zk plus one, which is we call as the z bar k1 of this form. So now we have our artificial zk plus one. And then we can continue this, uh, we can continue this procedure to estimate uh, zk plus two, and then so on and so forth. Doing S step, then we can have an estimation of the of the vk plus one to vk plus eight, for example, here. And then we can have the estimation of zk plus eight. S, which is uh, uh, the bar Ks, this is our estimation. We can also do this to the infinite uh, infinite step. Uh, assume it is convergent, then the limiting point of this uh, of this uh, prediction or this extrapolation is equal to uh, this form here. So basically, we we uh, we have estimation of all the uh, future of uh, Vk plus i's with i greater or equal to one. So basically, this is the, uh, uh, actually how you can use the trajectory to uh, design um, a setting. And uh, it's, uh, so everything here is a linear. So we from the least uh, square and then to the linear combination. So everything here is a linear. So we can have a compact representation of this uh, of this uh, linear prediction here. So we're going to call the S step extrapolation as this form here. So the curly E S Q K here going to be our extrapolation. So the explanation is nothing but the, uh, the linear combination of the vk minus q to vk here, the, what we already have. So the coefficient c here is, comes from the, uh, of this, the first column of this uh, matrix. So the metric here yeah, looks a little bit uh, completely, uh, complex, but it's here. So we're gonna have the coefficient of the ck, and then we can have this uh, square, metric, uh, square metric here. We're gonna have the sum of the power of this, uh, Matrix, and then we're going to take out the first column to as our coefficients. Okay, so we have uh, then yeah with this we have our proposed algorithm. So what we're going to do is that we're going to draw our iteration uh, as usual, uh, just that we're going to record the difference vectors zk and zk minus one, and then we're going to store the difference vectors into uh, a matrix which is not big. So the Q here is uh, usually is a, a very small, uh, for example, less than ten. Okay, so every Q plus two steps, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna compute the coefficient matrix first. If the special radius is a smaller than one, then we're gonna do the extrapolation. 
So the return here, here is that the, with this special really smaller than one, then the sum here is going to be uh, bounded actually going to be convergent if s equals infinity. So otherwise, we're going to do nothing. And then for the uh, every other steps, we're going to do nothing. For example, zk bar k here is equal to zk. And or you can also do something, for example, the also do some uh, initial step here, for example, with very small initial parameters. So basically, this is the algorithm. Uh, OK, so some remarks. Uh, so we're going to do this extrapolation every Q, uh, Q plus two steps. And uh, so the computational cost here is not that big because that the Q here is not very small. So solving the least square also re rewards in computing the uh, inverse of a Q plus uh, Q times Q matrix, which is also very small. So we have extra memory cost, which uh, is N plus uh, one times Q plus one. Also the computational cost is many from this to the inverse. Or the inverse of this, which mainly is uh, yeah, uh, q plus one, uh, q squared times n, the complexity. Uh, we can treat the uh, the iteration as a perturbation of the fixed point iteration. So the perturbation here can be the epsilon k here, which is our uh, the explanation, uh, extrapolation. Sorry. So then, uh, for example, from the perturbation theory, as long as it, uh, as long as this perturbation is summable, absolutely summable, then we can have the convergence of the signal of the iterates, and so. To do so, the actual on to ak here determine every step such that uh, the ak times the term here are going to be absolutely, uh, absolutely summable. So we can have this uh, uh, weighted or the safeguarded linear prediction. Uh, so the uh, yeah, as I mentioned, there's the spectral really smaller than one is that we can have this uh, the sum here of the power of the metric here can be uh, going to be convergent actually converge to this. Uh, inverse matrix. Okay, so this is some remarks. So we can also have an illustration on how it works. So again, this is the example we just saw that the R for solving this simple feasibility problem. That then we can have four different types of extrapolation. For example, for the magenta one, we're going to extrapolate every four steps. And then for the uh, red one, going to be extrapolated every uh, 25 steps, or the black one, we're going to extrapolate for the infinite number of steps. So actually, we can see here for this problem here, so everything is exact because that the spiral here is the perfect logarithmic, uh, logarithmic spiral. So uh, actually, the predicted point falls exactly onto the trajectory of the sequence of the DR. For example, uh, and uh, yeah, you can see here that for the infinite number of uh, infinite infinite number of uh, prediction, we can have the solution. Uh, um, we can obtain the solution of the problem. This again because of everything here is exact, so we don't have any uh, error here. But in in practice, this not won't, uh, this won't happen in general because that uh, we always have errors. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna show you, uh, discuss a little bit about some relative work, and then I'm gonna show you some numerical ex experiments. So actually, from what you have, uh, from what I have described, that uh, if you you are familiar with uh, extrapolation from the numerical analysis, then yeah, you can uh, uh, directly solve the connections here. So yeah, here I'm gonna show you some uh, relative work. So actually, in the numerical analysis, this is already a quite studied work, uh, 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 a field which is called a, a convergence, a convergence acceleration, uh, which is that if you have a sequence zk, so can I design another sequence z bar k such that the z bar k converging to the solution faster than zk? Okay, so yeah, this dates back to 1927, uh, and then uh, yeah, from uh, then which is called the Atkins and data uh, process, and then. Uh, and Anderson acceleration from 1964, actually recent, uh, in recent uh, years, there also has been a lot of application of Anderson's acceleration to the announcement case. And then Avax acceleration from the 1970s and then recently, uh, for example, regular nonlinear acceleration from uh, uh, Demi School. And, um, and also uh, he, uh, he also has done uh, uh, yes, uh, several follow-up works, but he only mentioned one uh, from uh, the 2016 New Year's uh, conference. Okay, so then what is polynomial extrapolation? So imagine you have this linear system, and then with a the special radius of m is really smaller than one, then you can have the uh, this uh, uh, linear system with respect to the difference vector of zk minus zk minus uh, of this star. So suppose that we have the minimal polynomial of the uh, of the matrix m respect to z zero minus z star, then we can have this relation here. Again, so looking at the first item here, so this is nothing but zj minus z star. So we can have our, our solution z star. Uh, 
as a, a linear combination of Z0 to ZJs, uh, to ZQs. So the coefficient here actually is nothing but this uh, uh, from this least square, uh, which is uh, the same thing as we have all this thing. So this is the uh, polynomial extrapolation. But sometimes actually the order of the, uh, of the minimal polynomial is uh, difficult to determine or uh, some other aspects. Uh, so then actually we can use this um, and the Q, uh, this minimal polymer extrapolation is that uh, every, uh, we're going to compute Q plus two uh, points, then compute the different vectors, and then we're going to compute this again, this uh, least square. And then we have the coefficient, and the, then the output is the, linear, uh, is the linear combination of the generator points. So this is the uh, MPE. And then for the RE, that uh, the, this problem here can be year post, then we can have this uh, regular one such that the uh, coefficient sum equal to one. So this is the rank reduced uh, extrapolation. Okay, so these are the existing work. And then for our work is nothing but, actually when our prediction goes to infinity, then our result is uh, replacing the MPE here, uh, ZJ by ZJ plus one. So we shift the, uh, the linear combination by one step. So this is corresponds to when a is equal to infinity. However, but uh, our, our diversion is motivated by the trajectory of sequence, and uh, we also have the special radius check, so which actually makes our method uh, more stable than the, for example, MPE and RIE. So we are uh, solving this affine constraint minimization problem. Uh, here, the R here is L1 norm, and here is the nuclear norm. So these two magenta and red ones are our methods, while the blue and uh, uh, sine ones is the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, MP and I, uh, or the, uh, sorry, this orange one is MP and I. So as you can see here, our method is better than this two, mostly because the, uh, we have this uh, uh, check, uh, which is uh, makes our, our scheme more, more stable. Okay, so I'm gonna quick uh, have, uh, yeah, the SRN guarantee uh, as, it, as the, uh, it is a polymer extrapolation. So we have the same guarantee as the uh, existing, uh, the polymer extrapolation. So I'm gonna skip. skip. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to mention about the uh, regularized nonlinear acceleration. Uh, so uh, in the Arjuna paper, they are designed this for the uh, theoretic gradient descent. For example, uh, you can have this uh, linear metric with a special gradient less than one. And then you can have the, uh, uh, so they have this regularization to avoid uh, the ear condition of VQ here. So also some, some equal to one. So then in practice to determine the lambda here, this is regularization parameter, they use a grid search. So it, meaning that at each step, they're gonna pick several lambdas and then to choose the best one from, this, uh, from them. So which can end several, uh, uh, some extra computational cost. But the problem is actually for the gradient descent, as we had just said, the, the eventual trajectory is a straight line. So actually using uh, actually the initial uh, method, for example, FISTA can, or restart FISTA can give us a uh, quite good uh, result, which is here. So we can just look at uh, this uh, first figure is that uh, uh, the black line here is the for backward spacing, which is uh, very slow. And then the dash line here is the FISTA, which uh, is oscillating. And then the restart feature is the blue line, which is here. So which is the fastest among all. Actually, as you can see here, for all the figures, the restarted phase is the fastest. So this is the simplest one and also the fastest because for the problem, this is mainly because the problem itself is somehow is uh, simple enough. Okay, so I'm then gonna show you a little bit extra, uh, more uh, experiments. Uh, for example, now we are dealing with the uh, uh, two now some stem uh, and um, yeah, again, it's a fine constraint problem. So the, uh, the top row just to show us the angle, uh, actually is the trajectory. The angle here is the, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. So the angle here is the VK uh, between VK and VK minus one, or the angle uh, from ZK to ZK minus one to ZK minus two, uh, that angle there. So as we can see for the polyhedral case with L1 norm, so the constraint is a polyhedral set, uh, polyhedral set. And then for the L1 norm, L1 norm, which is a polyhedral function, so we can see that the angle converts to a constant. So which means that we have a perfect log logarithmic spiral. So we can see here that the initial ADMR is the, is the slowest amount of for all the three examples here. So the initial ADMR here is not working. So then for our scheme with uh, S equal to 100 steps uh, or the S equal to infinity, then we have this acceleration, so which is faster. The problem here, because that the problem here is uh, uh, 
is uh, totally not smooth. So the initial uh, NM here won't give you any benefits. Oh, this is just a zoom thing. Uh, so the uh, another one, which is a lasso, uh, which is a smooth one. So we continue solving this problem with uh, with NMM. So actually, things for this pro uh, this example, you have uh, uh, smoothness. Actually, the problem uh, the problem locally is even strongly convex. So then actually, the, here the initial NMM is going to give you some oscillation, but then the advantage is not as big as the uh, sorry uh, yeah the the other one that here is not as big as the our uh, methods. Uh, this is because that the uh, the problem again is very simple because that uh, uh, for this case the eventual trajectory is a straight line. So then, um, yeah, if you increase the value of a k here to, for example, to point uh, point three to point seven or even k minus one to k plus two, then you can basically you can have the phase star working for this case. But then the problem is that we don't have convergence for uh, proving for phase star applying to ADMM for this uh, problem. Okay, so the last example is the uh, uh, impenting problem that uh, this is TV impenting. Uh, again, this is a polyhedral problem, but uh, the angle here uh, is also letting be all, uh, because we are looking at the different uh, uh, trajectory. So here you have also letting, but uh, yeah, for the right fixed point a trajectory is, uh, not, uh, is converging to a constant. Okay, so again here, that because the problem is a polyhedral, then the, uh, Initial idea is a, is a slow is the slowest among all, and then our method is uh, it provides a little bit of benefits. So we can also look at the PSNR. So uh, the that the our method can provide a faster uh, increase for the PSNR. So to have you uh, to have some visual quality, that the this, uh, the top left is the original image, and then uh, bottom left is the corrupted one. And then the middle, uh, then this, uh, the uh, top middle is the uh, ADMM. Uh, at, uh, so all the uh, four figures here are the taking from the surface iteration of this method. So then the top middle is ADMM and then top uh, uh, top right is the uh, initial ADMM. So the PSN, PSN here is 20.5 uh, 20, uh, 20 and 20.1. And then for our method that then yeah, is around 20. So the the difference here is mainly from the background. That actually, the uh, we uh, the extra range here actually provides a cleaner background. Okay, I'm gonna sum up the uh, to this talk. So, uh, based on the outcome of initial accelerations, then uh, first I just discuss the degree of first order method. Basically, we have uh, we have three different tra tra trajectories and uh, uh, one straight line and two spirals. Actually, using this, we can further categorize uh, first order methods. And then, based on this uh, uh, funding, we uh, developed an adaptive acceleration for the first order methods, for example, yeah, motivated by the trajectory. So, we have, uh, yeah, so uh, we have local acceleration guarantees, but globally, actually, it is working just that you need uh, an online, update, uh, online parameter to control that it is convergent. But actually, usually the uh, just uh, extrapolation without any uh, coefficient in, uh, coefficient in front of the uh, extrapolation, it is convergent. So yeah, it's it is stable, but uh, also we cannot prove it. So for, for the polyhedral function, we can prove uh, we can have guaranteeing acceleration for the dr and the uh, uh, parameter splitting using four points points, which is uh, using the past two vectors uh, to do the uh, pr uh, uh, to do the initial scheme. Then for the four best fitting or the gradient descent, because the trajectory eventually is a straight line. So actually just the standard initial scheme is gonna give you a selection and particularly the restart phase star is, uh, is the fastest among all so far. So this comes to the two references, uh, one conference and one is currently under review. And uh, many thanks for your time. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Yeah. So very many results, uh, you have a very nice overview, a very nice, uh, and interesting new results. Are there questions? Thank you. So we have a question in the chat, Banan Lee. So uh -huh. you can also uh, unmute yourself and, and ask uh, the question. Otherwise, uh, uh, okay, yeah. Let, let, let us give Nan Lee the, the chance to to ask the question. Yeah. Or should we do it? Okay, then probably. How can nothing happen? Okay, you're gonna speak. Okay, okay so oh. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak it. So, can I say in the in the essence that your linear prediction is not is much more than uh, first order methods? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, a good point. 
what I didn't mention here is about the quasi Newton method. For example, uh, uh, Hedy and his collaborators has done a lot of work on the uh, uh, second order dynamics with the tension damping. So with that, then uh, after this equation, you can have the uh, like a quasi Newton method. Uh, so what I didn't mention here. So, but because for that approach, the problem is similar in that uh, this for the yeah the dynamics of uh, smooth plus non smooth then. Uh, yeah, it was great, but once we move to the uh, the sum of two non-smooth functions, then it is not working. Uh, uh, but essentially, uh, I would say you can treat treat the method here as first order method, but you can also treat it as the quasi Newton method. That uh, just as you have a pretty condition matrix, the matrix is uh, different. Uh, somehow you can treat it as uh, a preconditioned uh, method, and uh, somehow uh, yeah, in between, I would say. Uh, Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, so I was just, um, I was just a little confused. I mean, I mean, it seems like you're describing a kind of generic acceleration procedure for for almost any sequence, right? You you look at mm -hmm. these sequence of differences, and then you try to predict where it's going, and then you try to jump ahead many steps, right? Yeah. But what I wasn't clear on was like under what conditions does this work? You know, okay, yeah. Yeah, good point. So, so far we are only restrict ourselves to the non-smooth optimization. Right. And also we, are, we can use the partial smoothness to analyze. Uh, yeah, fortunately, uh, most of the non-smooth uh, uh, non we are using today are partial smooth. So I would say that then uh, mm -hmm. with the, uh, as long as your problem, uh, the non-smooth function in, in your problem is the partial smooth. And then uh, we can guarantee that locally you can have some regularity about, uh, on the sequence generated by the methods. Uh, so beyond this, for example, monoth inclusion, for example, right? Uh, actually, this is something that we have looked into that uh, uh, there can also be something can be done because that you can extend the partial smoothness from uh, functions to uh, uh, maximum monoth operators. And then you can then you can also do some linearization stuff. But the thing is that uh, the linearization of a monoth operator is not uh, so. Uh, it's not that straightforward. Uh, 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 okay, it, it's okay. Just as the, the corresponding matrix to analyze the spectral process is much difficult than the uh, than the observation because that here we're gonna have uh, uh, everything is symmetric, right? For the substantial or the gradient, but the for monotonic process, yeah, it's uh, you can have some results, so, but uh, yeah, it's not as so neat. At a, at a very high level, you're assuming that the process that's generating the sequence of points has certain underlying properties. Right. And yes. then yeah. this allows the this allows this prediction scheme to show the convergence of this prediction scheme. Uh yes. That's, uh, a, very, uh, that's, is, uh, that's a very, you know, that's very, very high level, but that just because you actually the sound was breaking up quite a lot also. So uh, oh, sorry. at least for me, yeah. But yeah. okay, but I, I see so. The partial, the partial smoothness of the underlying process allows you to prove that these methods converge, right? Yeah. Because you didn't yes. actually state a convergence theorem, really. Uh, yes, we need to have uh, yeah, convergence. For example, the uh, the method itself should be convergent. Uh, then we can have acceleration as well. With. But, mm -hmm. For example, then, uh, yeah, for example, uh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, for example, uh, Dem School, uh, yeah. So they also uh, work on, for example, the accelerating uh, FISTA or prime dose mm -hmm. fitting, this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, FISTA, for example. Uh, yeah, so you can do this. Uh, because, uh, yeah, you can also prove the conversion of, uh, of the original FISTA for example, by leaving modification of parameters and uh, yeah, all the, uh, all the another choice of inner frames, right? So uh, you can also do this, but uh, uh, yeah, the, you can have some results. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be more difficult to have a solution, uh, which yeah, you can do this, but yeah, it's not a guarantee to give you a solution because the, as we have said, the traditional phase actually is really oscillating, right? So which makes it uh, difficult. Okay. Thank you. But I mean, I mean, this okay. is a, I mean, I mean, I drew this picture with the two intersecting lines like in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking like, okay, like I wonder if there's some way to like predict where you, you know, to jump ahead in this process. Uh, but yes, I didn't yes, have yes. any tools to, to, to do this analysis with. So, but I guess with this partial smoothness somehow gives you something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Are there other questions? Oh, another question in the chat. Do you want to ask a question? Or should we read it? Okay. No. Uh, okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. No, no. Um, I can. Uh, I can also ask directly yes. the question. Yes. Uh, basically, it is what uh, I've written in the, in the chat. Uh, is it possible that the, the success of uh, these uh, of of the linear prediction that you proposed lies in the fact that uh, it transforms a, a trajectory uh, which uh, which would be of infinite length into a finite length trajectory? And uh, maybe is it possible that uh, the uh, restarted FISTA does the same as the same effect? Uh, okay, go on go question. Uh, so I would not say is infinite length trajectory because actually the underlying uh, method we are uh, we are trying to. Oh, okay. So let me think. Oh yeah, okay. It, under the current framework is, uh, yeah, actually the sequence yeah, always have a finite length. For example, then, yeah, for example, for, uh, after linear regression, we have a linear system, right? And uh, actually, uh, luckily, for example, for backsplitting, we have strong, a local strong complexity. Uh, then, uh, then locally, you can have a linear convergence. Actually, then the sequence is central actually give you a finite length. Uh, so uh, I don't think this actually transform the infinite length to a finite length, just that you have, uh, uh, final lens, uh, you have final lens trajectory, the, then the linear prediction just makes the, uh, the path shorter. Uh, for example, this one here, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see, jump to the illustration. Yeah, for example, the uh, the magenta, the red and the black ones are just shorter than the gray one. Yeah, you, you just make the, uh, the trajectory that's shorter. Instead of uh, yeah, uh, uh, and then the great trajectory is not infinite length. Okay, okay, I see. Thank you. And then for your second part, so actually, yeah, restarted FISTA, uh, is I would say it's a little bit different. Uh, so for the FISTA, is that actually locally, you can, uh, yeah, look, you can. Uh, also, that you're gonna, you, you're gonna approach a solution and then you're gonna actually overshoot and then you're gonna, uh, you're gonna shoot back, right? So actually for restart FISTA, you're gonna, it can capture the point where you're gonna overshoot. And then from that point, you're gonna start everything uh, again and so on and so forth. So I would say is, uh, is a little bit different. Okay, thank you. Thank but you very much. Somehow, yeah, uh, yeah just one, one more remark. Yeah, somehow restart FISTA find the shortest path. <laughs> Why for the others, they, we, we cannot exactly find the shortest path, but for phase star, as you start phase star, you can. Yeah. Thank you. Are there other questions? So I, I have a question anyway. So I, I noticed <coughs> that for the for the inertial algorithms you used, when you consider this very conservative, uh, let's say rule, uh, already used by Alvar Datush with a yeah with a parameter of uh, less than one third yeah zero point three yeah, but mm -hmm. there are some some new papers that which show that when using both inertia and uh, relaxation parameters, one can uh, kind of try to balance yeah between the two, and one can take inertia parameters even close to one. Do you try to 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 use uh... these schemes? So yeah. That there are uh, there are several papers like we, from the last yeah two years yeah, on mm -hmm. the balance between relaxation and and uh, inertia. Uh, okay, yeah, good point. So uh, I haven't tried uh, myself, for example. Uh, yeah, I think. Mm, let me see. So, okay. So, if you uh, if you overshoot with your inertial, and then you're gonna use under relaxation to bring it back, right? So then, yeah, yeah. I think it, yeah, it is possible to have the the uh, to have uh, to afford larger inertial parameters. Uh, but I'm not sure that the what the outcome would be. For example, for this case, uh, for this uh, for this a uh, very simple pretty short case, then what the result would be uh, would be for the inertial scheme. This would be my question. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, yeah. So this is something yeah, one should consider and see if if uh, one gets a better, you know, a, a better convergence 
plot for the inertial algorithm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, what I'm guaranteeing, for example, for the inertial, for the inertial, uh, for, for the relaxed uh, Douglas Rushford rank. So for mm -hmm. this case, uh, actually, the result is proved by the Hans Bosch and his collaborators is that uh, so the optimal inertial parameter, uh, sorry, the the optimal is relaxation parameter is one. Okay. So yeah, if you over relax, then you're gonna slow down. Then you under relax. Then combined with inertial, uh, yeah, maybe there's uh, some hope to have uh, uh, to have some again. And yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, but uh, the, uh, yeah, you may have some uh, acceleration, but the acceleration won't as significant as the, for example, phase star to four back splitting over three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Are there other questions? So then let us stop here. Thank you, Jingwei, for a okay. very nice talk, a very good discussion. Yeah, we had many people today yeah, in, in our Zoom room. So we will uh, yeah. post the video in the in the slides on the on the web, our website. Yeah, I'm gonna show you the slides. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. I just want to to say that uh, we are, we also have our YouTube channel, yeah, with uh, you know many followers and many yeah reg registered mm -hmm. people. We are yeah happy to to put the, the videos also on, on YouTube. So yeah. I, I want to wish you a nice week and just to announce that our speaker next Monday will be Patrick Melitz from uh, University of Brandenburg. So. Have a good time. See you next Monday. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, many thanks. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.